This is Story Compass, a writer's utility that guides you through the structure of a screenplay, with a timing function to evaluate films in real time to see how filmmakers execute the turning points of a story. Insights that you can immediately apply to your own storytelling. Before we jump ahead to the functions and features of the app, we should step back for a look at the premise behind it, how it evolved and how it will ultimately come to your rescue. Let's start by looking at the magical properties of this number three to see where this whole three-act structure idea came from in the first place. Maybe it has something to do with the balance of a triangle. There's a certain solidity and strength in its structure. And it's the simplest geometric shape that can actually stand on its own. All this with just three lines. And you'll find similar groupings of three that show up all over the place in nature, math, science, mythology, religions of all kinds. And let's just take a look at popular culture for a minute. You got three amigos, three banditos, three musketeers, and of course, these three knuckleheads. In fairy tales, you've got three bears, three little pigs, three billy goats, three fairies, and three blind mice. That's rattling off just a few. And if you think about it for a moment, there's a lot more where they came from. In a completely different realm, you've got do, re, mi, and it takes one, two, three notes to make a chord. That's the musical triad. There's three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, or if you're mixing values of light, the colors are red, green, and blue. And that's all you need. You can create any color you want from just these three. And the chronology of our lives are processed that way as well, with past, present, and future, morning, noon, and night, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Let's just look at the timeline for dinner. It's also broken into three with appetizer, main, and dessert. One, two, three. But your main isn't complete without what? Two sides, and that makes yet another triad. Same for dessert. There's only three choices. Always has been, always will be. Just these three. You want to figure out who's buying now? Well, we can sort that out with another round of three. It's like a biological imperative to seek this balance, and there's really no escaping it. Our brains are just wired that way. And guess what? Our brains are wired for story in much the same way. It was almost two and a half thousand years ago that Aristotle first observed and documented this pattern of three in the famous Greek tragedies of his day. He found that to captivate an audience, stories need to have a beginning, middle, and an end. And he identified specific emotional states that need to be triggered from one act to the next to keep the audience engaged and keep them in their seats. It's not like he invented the three-act structure. It was more of a discovery that when great stories work, they work for a reason. And not just the tragedies of ancient Greece, but it's the same principles that have resonated with the human psyche since the dawn of time, when man first started telling stories around the campfire. And the interesting thing, and sort of the premise of this app, is that if we change the length of the story, the relative spacing between the acts remain the same. Everything is proportional, regardless of how long the story is. As an example, let's take this campfire scene and we'll stage this story as a half-hour comedy. Make it 30 minutes. And then we'll take this film, the second one here, and stretch it into a two-hour epic, keeping the relative spacing between the acts exactly the same as above. And we'll make it some kind of sci-fi action adventure. We'll make it this movie, for argument's sake. Just something really different than the comedy on the left. Now, looking at the timing relationships between them, what happens at the 25% mark of the half-hour comedy has the same dramatic effect, or the same purpose, as the event that occurs at the same percentage of the two-hour epic. It's where the confrontation begins after the setup in Act 1. And at 75%, we transition to the climax, which also happens at 75% of the longer version, all proportional, regardless of length. And it's right about now that this guy launches into his rant about how all this is starting to look like a formula, and certainly nothing unique or original could possibly come from such a formulaic approach. Let's just pause the timeline right here, and we'll get back to it in a minute. But this comes up so often that it's worth addressing this concern that structure somehow means formula. There's a big difference between the two, and hopefully we can resolve it with a quick analogy by checking out the first song on this guy's playlist. Just like a story, this song has three sections, with a beginning, middle, and an end. Yeah, so? 
What about that big chunk in the middle there? It could be anything, right? Well, not really. If you break it down, you've got verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. That's the structure of the second act, the heart of the song. All right, so let's pick another one. Different artist, different genre, worlds apart. Now look at that. The form is exactly the same. But wait a minute, they're completely different. Different artists, different genre, different generations even. They don't sound the same at all. The point is that artistry is not in the structure. It's in the melody, lyric, harmony, orchestration, and all these other creative elements that ride on top of a common form that holds everything together. Well, to hell with that, you say. I'm the artist here. This is my song. I'm going to create my own structure. There, now that's, that's definitely more creative. And I'm not following someone else's rules here. Unfortunately, this is what it's probably going to do to your audience. It just doesn't compute. Call it experimental if you like, but you won't find it at the top of anyone's favorite playlist. So the fact is, this is the form that we're drawn to because for some reason it's satisfying to our senses. It stimulates a wave of emotions that draw us in, holds our attention, and it just feels complete. All this to say that structure really isn't a formula, but it is all about form, a form that audiences are able to connect with. And likewise, we yearn for stories that hit specific emotional beats as well. So with this awareness, hopefully you'll find that structure is not inhibiting at all. In fact, it's liberating because you can let your imagination run wild, knowing that structure is there to organize even your wackiest ideas in a way that audiences are wired to respond to. So enough of that. Let's get back to where we left off with Aristotle and the three acts. And what should be obvious and maybe daunting now is that each of these sections represent huge chunks of time over the course of a two-hour film. And just like a song, it sure would be nice if we could define more subdivisions to make this timeline more manageable, with stages that trigger a particular ebb and flow of emotions that'll keep the audience psychologically engaged. And that's where the work of Joseph Campbell comes in. Campbell was a comparative mythologist who noticed that successful stories and myth across all cultures and all time share a common pattern that resonates deep within the human psyche. He didn't invent it per se, but identified what he called the hero's journey, a kind of universal story that repeats itself time and again in fables, fairy tales, folklore, and myth, a pattern that perhaps we're just genetically programmed to respond to. His insights had a huge impact on a generation of screenwriters and filmmakers. In fact, Star Wars is a play-by-play -play enactment of this paradigm. But it didn't stop there. Hundreds of books have been published by a new generation of teachers, authors, and screenwriting mentors, each putting their own spin on the structural elements that make great screenplays work. With a mountain of resources like this, you have to wonder, where do you start? And who do you listen to? The fact is that each of these authors have valuable insights that you don't want to dismiss. But it is overwhelming, and the sheer volume of it all can literally kill your creative momentum, especially if you fear you might be overlooking something important. Wouldn't it be awesome if we could just take these different structural models, these paradigms from all these different authors, and find a way to configure each of them into a common format, a story wheel like this, so you can lay one over the top of the other for a quick and easy comparison of theories. And what you'll find is, Campbell's call to adventure is another author's inciting incident, and yet another's catalyst or opportunity. And you'll find similar correlations all around the story wheel, which reinforces the viability of all this since each of these authors seem to have come to essentially the same conclusions, all built upon Aristotle's initial premise. Tapping on a story wheel brings up a quick synopsis of that paradigm, and the resources section at the bottom here provides you with links to that author's work. Having the paradigms aligned like this is valuable in itself, but the cool thing is, you can evaluate films on your own with the timing function. Under settings, just enter the runtime of the film in hours and minutes, or just minutes if that's the way the runtime is listed. Let's just set our runtime to one minute for this demo so you can actually see the clock hand in motion. Apply and start the timer when the film begins, and the clock hand will make one complete revolution in one minute, passing through each story beat in correct proportion because, again, 
everything is proportional regardless of length. You can cycle through the paradigms on the fly like this, and you might find that one author's perspective resonates more strongly with you than another, giving you insights you might not have picked up on otherwise. And if you need a prompt along the way, for example, we're coming up on the ordeal here, tap the screen for a quick study guide version of that particular beat of the story. As you spend more time with this, you'll be amazed at how many films actually fit these models precisely. Other times it might not be so obvious, but often that's exactly where the artistry lies. And we'll clarify that with a final analogy here. If you think about structure as the skeleton or the armature inside of a sculpture, then your story is the clay that goes on top. That's the artistry that you want the audience to see. You don't want them to see the structure, but it is there to hold everything together. If at any point you can actually see the armature sticking out, then the artist, or the writer in our case, hasn't done their job. And that job is to create the diversion so we don't think about the mechanics underneath. And structure is also there to keep you from doing this by accident. And I say by accident because of course you can do this as long as you know you're doing it and hopefully doing it for a good reason. So as you evaluate films and watch these patterns emerge, you can translate those insights into your own writing. You could choose to follow these guidelines right from page one, if you're that kind of writer, or just save it for those times when you feel completely lost in the woods and just looking for a way out. You can remain focused creatively with peace of mind of knowing that this app is your compass to nudge you through the story beats and ultimately get you out of the woods. No worries, no anxieties about whether you might have missed some important detail in your screenplay. Now, go out and make something great.